open it up the neck and right through the middle now. I just waited until we had a couple trucks and I was on a phone call. We bought a machine we had a fix. I had a couple questions on it, so now I had three trucks behind me and we're gonna split this bitch in half. Gorgeous corn. Gotta love it. Eighteen, nineteen hundred RPMs. Right where she likes it.
little chopping right around three miles an hour three two three three the whole way across the whole field and almost a mile long so tells you it's been decent the whole way what's going on right now is uh doing a little turnaround with the trailer so up there this whole field on this side of the ditch I mean right here it's crazy it's like 13 14 feet um, and like this area of the field but we went in the center where it's between 12 and 13 feet the whole field um, it's more average for this side that over here is just crazy but it's, it's awesome um, we stopped and did the old-fashioned population test um, and we measured out third, uh, 17 and a half feet you count the corn stalks and then you tie them all together with a string and a weight and you weigh it and now uh, we've never done it that way at least not in a long time so we kind of forgot how but Fernie's getting the numbers offline on how you, uh, you convert that weight into tons an acre because everything here Christoph's chopping three miles an hour I think seven rows so it's very consistent it's really nice how's the old Ford it's quiet I had a guy comment and said it looks nice what do you think it does. I think it looks alright <laughs> I think the passenger window stopped working but that's uh, you just gotta wiggle the switch to go up yeah I can't get it to go oh. Bertie just got loaded and then uh, while he was loading he was doing the math and uh, 32 uh, point something tons an acre is what we're averaging right now. Uh, there's a reason that we always say this is this field makes our best corn because it does. Um, and this that right there was like a nice average spot. You see that we made sure to check where Kristoff was driving the consistent speed the whole field. It's not like we went over that section I was showing earlier that was 13 to 14 feet. I mean that stuff was ridiculously because uh, it'd be cool as hell if the corn was all like that, but that would have to be like California irrigated corn to pull that off in a whole field. Um, but yes, the averaging down here, looking at a spot that seems like everywhere is 32 tons an acre. Um, there are spots that are less, not gonna lie. But for this side of the ditch, that's pretty cool. Um, that's the best way we could get the uh, average with a uh, not having any of the uh, way to just read it on the go with a chopper so that's pretty impressive I think for some Vermont corn uh, this is pioneer corn um, first off what day corn is this Give me, I'm gonna look it up. okay he's gonna look it up but it is pioneer uh, I a that might be true 104 day pioneer but he's gonna make sure and look this is the, our longest day corn that's down here, so you expect to have very good yielding. Uh, the seedway, not as tall, but bigger ears. So, we're actually, we have a section over there that we're gonna do the same thing. And uh, he's expecting the same, if not almost more tonnage, because he said it was chopping harder. But, I don't know. We'll see when we get to that part too. Right now we're at the very back of the field and it's still the same. Oh, he's skipping. That right there is lost production, man. Come on. <laughs> that was from where he did a, a loop to, to get out when he was opening. But we have had 30 ton corn down here before. But like Christoph was saying earlier, I guess it wasn't on the camera, but we have never had this much tonnage down here before. It just had so much rain um, that this field just kept on drinking and it's river bottom. So on a dry year, it don't grow that amazing. I mean, it grows good, yes, but it dries out so quick because it's uh, sandy ground. So this year, this ground just kept getting fed and this corn took every bit of that and it shows because this is hands down the best corn we've ever had down here from the Pioneer and the Seedway. Um, I, there's no disputing it. That chopper is struggling and that is the way we like it. Kristoff can't see where he's going. He's having a good time. This is why our bunk is filling up quick this year in this second bunk. 
been so wild today and we've just been recording all day that uh, I just had to go switch batteries about uh, what time is it three o'clock that way uh, might as well keep recording <laughs> So we got Marcus on the bunk, and we got Kevin on the bunk. So we ended up weighing that tracker. I don't know if I talked about it yet. But what Kevin's doing is he's bringing this whole bunk level again. That way they're not going over a hump because we're just pushing it out right now. You can see there was some, a uh, little bit of corn went over, so we'll have to grab some shovels to get it off the wall, but you know, that happens every year. Not a big deal, it's, not, it's only from today, so we'll shove it off later. And then over here, you can see what Kevin's up to. He's pushing this down, that way it's just easier to do. Cause then there's no, there's about a two and a half foot hump right there, he's getting rid of it. And then once it's flat, we'll bring, he'll bring it up square. So yes, that tractor weighs 30,500. This one weighs 27,300 something, as it's sitting right now, as both of them are. So that's with the push plate and with the weight block. So I wasn't lying when I said this is a very light tractor, but it's nice on the manure tank for all the road travel because it's less weight on your tires and I'm pulling less weight for on the road. Now it does suck when I come up to hills in the field because I could spin out sooner, but honestly, over the last uh, six years of running it on the manure tank, that has only been an issue every now and then. So it doesn't, isn't the end of the world. It does sway going down the road at a higher speed, but you'll have that with those thick sidewall tires. So, Kevin pushed bunk for us for about four years. I think I said that earlier when he was our feed guy. And he asked if we needed any help. And when we're doing Enosburg, it's a long haul. So the more help, the easier. So we said, you can definitely come push if you want to. So he was more than happy to get back in the seat after so long. He definitely missed that tractor, he was saying. You can see Kevin smoothing that at, back out. And then uh, once that's pushed out, then every load will be smooth again. But kind of getting it leveled out can be a struggle. But uh, it was only Kevin alone on the bunk for a little while. Stanley had to go do chores and Marcus wasn't here yet. So it kind of builds up quick. And he was saying earlier, he feels rusty, but he's getting back into it. It's been a while. But I gotta get going, the next load's coming. But I have to get some camera footage of Kevin on the bunk. He does watch the videos every now and then, so I wanted to make sure if he does watch this one, at least he knows uh, I did record him. Hey, now it's going nicer for me. He's not trying to push three feet at once. That's a nice push. We got Ke uh, Keith coming, and I gotta get rolling, otherwise Kristoff's gonna be waiting. I got a minute, so we'll, they got the bunk pushed out level now, so now it's easier pushing. This nest now throwing it to the end and then uh, push her out. You can see Marcus made a little bit of a staircase right there. We get some action. My bucket's holding up good. So you can see exactly uh, how he builds those staircases right there. He lifted up instead of curled in. And then it just happens so quick. And then with the blade, when it picks up, it's almost like curling a bucket in because of the motion. So that's why with the blade, it's a lot less likely of making staircases. But it still happens.
Well, I gotta go again. You're wondering how dry it is. Yeah, I got stuck in the back. Yeah, the box and it pushed out on the bottom there. A key's in front of me. Yeah, we still got quite a bit of run, probably about a good, uh, about so, I had to stop for a minute. I forgot to, uh, I just turned the video on when I was at the farm. I had to stop there. I had to get good service. And I forgot to get a cover picture for that video. So, normally I have that all done, and then wherever I am, I just turn it on. Um, so, I don't need good service, but I have to get the cover picture loaded this time, so it took me a little longer than Keith passed me. But, now that you guys think the whole field was nice and dry, or nice and wet, that we, me and Ferdy got stuck back there, or Ferdy and I, I don't think these are gonna help me right now. No. <laughs> but she is a dust cloud. It's as dry as the year where we actually pulled um, KRB's 40 foot trailer in this field. That's how dry it is again. It's like a dust cloud. And Chris, I was waiting right there because I wasn't in the right line. And that's the section where y'all uh, gotta do that testing on. I'm up at the shop and I'm waiting. There's gonna be something pulling in right there. Oh. Oh, maybe you can hear it. That right there is Alex. She just went all the way down to. Charlie boys and went and got that truck herself. They called, they got it done. So they changed the check valve for the fuel system and they thought they fixed it. You gotta turn it around. She's back. She was not happy not being able to pull anything for corn. What ended up happening was it ended up being an injector, but when we did an injector cutout on it, we couldn't figure it out. And that was because it was only stuttering under load. So I think the way they said they had to do it was they had to, well, they had to put the computer on it. We just did it manually on the valves. They had to put the computer on it. And I think they had to do it under load to an injector cutout to figure out which injector it was. So this only has park brakes when it has air. It's old school. So we gotta put air on it before she goes under it. Otherwise it's gonna slip off. Oh. Alex is ready to rock and roll. She's got everything hooked on. First load of the season. For the last day or two of corn. <laughs> Look at that. Did Henry go all the way down there with you? Yeah, he did. Henry, did you go get your mommy's truck? Yeah. You did? Was it fun? Yeah. It was? Do we drive fast? Yeah. Yes, we did, right? Speed limit. Yes, speed limit. <laughs> okay. Are we gonna get corn? Daddy? Okay. Henley, are you ready to go with mommy? Yeah. I'm gonna get some corn. We're very happy that the mommy's truck is back. Can you tell me if there's a car coming? No. Nothing? Henley, do you see daddy? And uncle is behind us too, huh? before you guys are done. Oh, I think I'm out. That's funny. 
Ja. And my mommy is really excited. Uncle is videotaping too, huh? Two, we left two strips, uh, same length. Actually, it should be wide enough. We just—I think he measured it, or if not, uh, we can measure it tomorrow because we won't get it all. But we had uh, some Pioneer and Seedway corn side by side, and uh, we just wanted to do a little weight comparison, and we're gonna do it, send a sample out. Just you know, it's always good to compare corns and stuff, and so. It's, Andreas and I are gonna finish uh, the video. Well, no. I'm gonna finish the night out with that, so. I'm not sure which one I have here. There we go.
more coming. We'll be done corn, cow corn tomorrow. And then after that, we might jump into snaplets right away and then uh, go from there. But thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one.